Hey friends, it is Trucker Ray and welcome to my channel. If you're viewing for the very first time, I share my journeys out on the highways of North America. As a Christian truck driver, I like to show the good, the bad and the ugly, what it's like out here, the reality of trucking. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Uh, this is a family friendly channel for those of you that are here for the first time so you will not hear anything inappropriate on this channel no cussing swearing or anything like that um, like i said you do get the reality of what it's like out here i'm not going to candy coat anything and make it look better than it really is if you're looking to get into the industry this is what it's like out here some days are good some days are bad uh, some of you that did not see my recent update might be saying, hey, what, what are you doing back? I thought you were done. I really encourage you to go look at the update. I can't remember what I called it. Uh, I think I called it something to the effect of, because of my dedicated YouTubers, I will return to making my OTR videos. I received a lot of wonderful comments from people just stating how much they really miss the videos, how much they enjoy them and uh, they really wanted me to continue doing them and i was thinking to myself um maybe if i just make these videos shorter maybe people actually will enjoy watching them and it'll be a lot less work for me and uh because like i said in my update people's attention span are just not it's it's there everyone's used to these short videos everywhere so I figured, okay, you know what, if I just provide updates, but longer ones, like for example, what you're about to watch, is basically what went down for me today out here in, in Manitoba. Um, I started my trip in uh, Grand Forks, uh, BC. I picked up a load, four picks for uh, some nurseries uh, stuff, so like uh, trees and bushes and whatever shrubs that were uh, being replanted and redistributed, re-whatever sold to other uh, nurseries out in the area. So my first trip was in Saskatchewan. The second trip was up in Nipawan in the same area. Um, and now um, my next one, I just did one approach to the prairie today, which you're about to see. And then tomorrow I'll be doing my final delivery, which is not very many, only, only 200 shrubs. But they're all bundled up. It'll take no time at all. And the trailer is an absolute mess. Uh, but I certainly won't uh, be going back to the trailer washout that I did last time and I'm going to share this with you I know I say in the video I'm going to share it with you later but I'm actually going to share it with you now um, I went there last time and they charged me oh my gosh $350 to wash your trailer out but they don't tell you that until after you're done uh, what were they called I'm trying to remember here for whatever reason it's got me in I don't know why it's got me why does this thing have me in Toronto <laughs> it's actually quite humorous these phones are just so inferior they really are they're terrible uh, what was the name of this place come on baby where are you oh I can't see anything. I'm getting old. Yeah, I can see like for miles, but I can't read nothing when it's up close like this. My gosh, I'm saying trailer wash near me and it's putting me, why is it putting me in, in, in Toronto? Like, I don't want to be anywhere near Toronto, ever. <laughs> um. Okay, I think I'm getting closer. There it is! Experts Fleet Service Center. They got a trailer wash out there, which is E-X-P-E-R-T-Z Fleet Service Center. You do not want to go there for a trailer washout. They will charge you so... It's criminal. It's not a rip-off, it's criminal. I was talking to one of my um 
one of my dispatchers over at work and and they said well we will never send you there again that was oh let, shall i read the review I went to this place for a simple trailer washout, nothing more. I had no idea I was going to be ripped off the worst I've ever been ripped off in my life. I have dealt with lumpers in the United States at coolers that never charge this much. I give them one star because the washout guy did a good job. However, I did notice when I went to go pick up my reload that there was a lot of stuff he missed. So one star is adequate. After one and a half hours of washing my trailer, they charged me $367. They said it was going to cost extra because it was a nursery load. Some plants and trees were previously inside. It was not predominantly, it was predominantly pine needles. It wasn't, a, it wasn't full of garbage. It was very simple, clean job. They used no soap, no disinfectant because it wasn't and it wasn't needed. It just needed a good washout, and they took complete advantage of us. It was only one man that cleaned out the trailer and another one watching, so maybe I had to pay for the other guy as a spectator. <laughs> Our company will never come back to this place again. To make things even better, I think I'll contact the Better Business Bureau and let them know what these guys are doing. It's absolutely absurd and criminal to charge that much. If you're going to go to this place, ask them ahead of time. They plan on charging you, obviously, $175 an hour. <laughs> I hear there's better truck washouts in Headingley. Oh, I did get a reply. I got a reply. Shall we read the reply? I never seen this. Firstly, thank you for taking time out to write such a long review. Why would you thank me? It's a terrible review. Apologies for replying so late as I was away for two weeks. Anyhow, your company called me last week as of March and asked for a trailer washout and informed them that we must look the trailer specifically for a nursery load. The trailer showed up and we saw the interior of the trailer and informed the driver that the company that the interior was too dirty and will take too much time and cost more than 300 no that's a lie the guy never told me that he never said that to me the guy at the front window didn't even quote me anything the driver said no it'll take 10 minutes i never said that either he must be he must have me confused with somebody else the trailer went back. Then you showed up next week with your trailer and we went to check the trailer and told you that it would take too much time. No, this is wrong. This guy is lying. This is not what happened. This is not what happened. This guy is lying through his teeth. I've never been to that place before. That was the first time I ever been there. I didn't leave and come back. Uh, I'm not going to read the rest of this. This is terrible. This guy is completely lying. Wow. Well, don't go to that place, guys. Experts, fleet services or whatever, don't go there. Not only do they rip you off, they actually call you a liar. That's terrible. Anyway... Fun, fun, fun. The reality of trucking. Watch out. You may get ripped off. Well, we learned the hard way. That probably took most of our um, profit from that trip that I did was that place. I'm going to edit my review and let them know that the response to my review is a lie. I've never been to that place before. Uh, that's really, really disappointing. Um, man, I almost feel like reading the rest of it, but... No. He's talking about somebody else. It's not me. Last thing you mentioned, if you're going to... Uh, what did he say here? Yeah, he's not very nice. Um, <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, this is, uh, like I said, it's not a long-winded video. It's just a short video to give you a brief update on how things are going. So, uh, why don't we... Uh, start off uh, the video where I'm just about in Portis La Prairie, just about, about at the delivery where I was going to deliver. Let's take you there.
something that I recommend, and I don't have to tell the veteran drivers out there, well, maybe I do. It's always a good idea to call the customer ahead of time. Even if you have maps, even if you have a GPS that's up to date, Oh, I know where I'm going. I don't need to call the customer. Well, how do you know that something hasn't happened at that customer? Maybe somebody had a heart attack, somebody's pregnant, maybe somebody... Something happened where no one's available to unload you. Or, uh, a road could be washed out because of bad weather. Or whatnot. It's always good to call the customer ahead of time. One of the instructions this guy gave me when I called him, he says, when I see the sign that says Miller's Campground, that's the exit I want, because it's on the service road up here. I kind of have an idea where I'm going, but he also said he was grateful that I phoned him because they weren't expecting me to come till tomorrow. Again, another reason why you should always phone due to miscommunication. Obviously, the place I picked up at gave them the wrong day when I was going to be showing up. So they were happy to know that <laughs> when I called them and let them know I was coming. So, um, I can't recommend that enough. Always phone ahead of time and give them a time. Let them know you're showing up. Let them know you're the driver. A lot of the time, they'll think it's the broker or the customer that's calling. Because they always say the same thing. There, there's the sign right there. Miller's Campground Exit 2 Kilometers. So that's the sign he told me to look for. So two kilometers up the road, we'll take that exit. And it should be right on the other side of the, inter uh, of, well, it's not an interstate, the freeway. Yeah. So... Man, I'll tell you something, I can't wait until the weather starts getting better to see sunshine every day for a while. It's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. I think the last time I came down this way and I went through the province of BC, I think this is it right here. Miller's left lane. Hello, hello, hello. I think this is the, the lane I want. Let's hope it is. Uh, you know what? I don't think this is the right one. Miller's left lane. I don't think this is it. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go this way anyway. Why? Because it looks like there's a service road there. Oh man. At least I hope so anyway. This is never fun when you have... Oh, what is it doing? It's telling me to go around in a circle. I wonder if I can even make that turn. Oh, we're gonna find out in a minute here. No, I do not want to initiate my brakes. Okay. This is the fun of doing, oh, this is the fun of doing these, uh, these nursery runs, you just don't know where you're gonna end up. And this is kind of the same idea that I had. Um, when I was delivering the other two, I was literally driving down a dirt road. Oh wow, I wonder if this is it, or maybe it's, see this may not be it here. I don't think this, well they said this is the same exit. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, when I was out in Saskatchewan, I was trying to do the deliveries. The instructions I had was take a left on this road, go two miles.
take a right on this road, go two miles. But it would not tell me whether or not the road had a number on it or anything. And none of those roads were labeled. It was actually quite funny. So this is obviously not it. I am assuming it's right up here. See, my GPS wanted me to cut across the highway and there might have been a way up there, but you know what? When the customer tells you to go a certain way, you, you gotta listen to the customer. Oh boy, you know what? I'm looking at something right now where there may be a dead end up here. It's not gonna affect me because I I found my place where I'm look what I'm looking for, but I'm glad I didn't listen to the GPS. Good grief, what's going on here? Wow, this is really soft. There's the Miller's campground. Not ever charming. I wonder what it'll look like when there's actually leaves on the trees. So I'm assuming, wow, this ground is really soft. I can almost feel my drive sliding a little bit. And I'm not even heavy. <laughs> I'll have to call you back, Ma. Okay, so this must be the place up here. Oh, you can get over from the freeway down here. Well, he sent me a different direction. So I am gonna go in this way. So you can turn down here. I didn't know that. At least I know now you can get back on the freeway here. <sighs> take it nice and wide, because I don't want to take out the signs. I actually ask for loads like this because I love the challenge. I do. Even though I don't know which way I'm supposed to go here. I got a feeling it's in the back. I got a feeling it's in the back. So what I'm going to do... Uh, it's got to be in the back. Can't be over here. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to park on the side of the building here. got to be in the back where they're unloading and then I'll just go inside and check in with them and everything should be good I can't believe how soft that road was my goodness yeah I'll just tighten myself up right here on the side here where I'm not in the way in case someone needs to get by me And then, uh, yeah, we'll go check in. I'm trying to take my seatbelt off and it's already off. <sighs> well, there's lots of activity back here. Hi there. Hey. How are you today? Was I talking to you on the phone earlier? I think so. Yeah, I'm Andrew. I'm Ray. Nice hey, Ray. to meet you, Andrew. Yeah. Um, You're... Uh, I'm just on the side road over good. here. I didn't know where to go. Yeah, I will... Uh, I'm going to take you to a door on the northeast corner of this steel building. So... Okay, on the other gonna, side of it's, it? There's a... It's actually a two-stage building. Okay. But I'm going to bring you north. Right. Straight ahead. I'm going to bring you right. Sure. What, what shoulder do you want to back in on? I can I can spot you too, but oh well. I mean, blindsided is always not a I good know. thing because it's easier. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what do you have a door on either side, or There's can a, you turn around and just do it in? Uh, I mean, I need to back you in there. Okay. I mean, yeah. if you're yeah, going to be fine. there, there you, yeah, it I, doesn't matter I'll, which way. I'll, I'll help you get in there. Yeah. Bring, uh, your, uh, I can give you this. I can give you this afterwards. Yeah. So trucks, we're just, trucks are back in there. Uh, Lots of times, so you're, sure. you're not asking. Yeah, me. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. If you've seen where I had to back in the last place, <laughs> um, what was it? Zo Zeos Nurseries up in Zozel. In Nip Zozel. Nip yeah, I've never been up to them. No, but, but yeah, they know you. I, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> you guys are all competitors, I guess, eh? Well, he buys from us. So oh, it's, okay. It's advance. Advance is the big chief there. He's, right. He's the where you where you where you right. loaded. He's right. The, he's the top of the ladder. Okay. But so, yeah. 
I'll, uh, I'll just, I'll just walk you ahead. Sure, I'll just follow you. Yeah. All right. This guy seems nice enough. <coughs> You know, when you go to these places, you got to expect a blindside back in somewhere, and I guess this is it. Even though you have a big open area like this, it's kind of funny actually. I'm not concerned about a blindside back in. Especially when you got a spotter, who cares, right? Oh, unless I'm coming in this side of the building. Or maybe that is that side of the building. Where has he got me going here? Well, I'm gonna get tight in here because I got a feeling I'm gonna back into that door right there. He said the north side, I believe, not the, well, is it gonna be right in between here? Let me guess. Okay. So you want That's it? your blind side, right? But if I if I spot you, how soft is that? There is that okay? This is how you're 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 gonna turn out and go back to number one. Okay. But yeah, it's firm. Okay. Um, you want you want to change direction? Oh no, I'll be fine. I mean, um, I just wanted to, if I can line up there, I should be good. Yeah, yeah I'll. Because I can move my mirror. I'll be your eyes. Okay, if yeah. I get close to hitting something, just scream. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll watch you here. Okay. Unloading me right now. Let's see how much how they do it here. Hello. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. That's a smart way to do it. Works for us. How yeah. much do you have in there? Have you figured that out? I guess not a lot, eh? Wow. This, I think this is gonna go a lot quicker than you thought. It will go quick. I didn't well I thought you I thought the truck was mine. Oh really? So I didn't it's, You didn't oh. he didn't communicate he didn't communicate uh, footage, he just communicated the amount. The amount. Ah so different things. I'm your maple. I'm your maple. Okay. Could we get our? Could we get our? There's not a whole lot left in here. <laughs> Look at that. There's a tiny little bit way in the back. Just to give you an idea how dirty this is. Ugh, look at this. Wow. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Oh. But we do have a washout I was told we can go to now. That'll do it for like 75 bucks. Instead of 350 like that other place. Okay. Yeah, there's not a lot left in there. 
I think there's like 200 little branch, little trees, but they're in bundles of five. So, and they're small ones. <sighs> All right, well. What time is it now? It's 1.30. Oh, you know what? I could probably still make it down there. But by the time I'm done, well, 1.30, hour and a half. Yeah, it'll be three o'clock now. I won't make it down there. By the time I get down there, everyone's gonna wanna go home. So I called them and let them know I can be there in the morning. And that's when they were inspect inspecting me or inspecting me, expecting me anyway. So I told them I'll be there at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, which is cool. It's only going to be like 25 minutes uh, from the Headingley Flying J anyway. And I don't have a reload yet, so it doesn't really matter. So I could have come in this way, but it doesn't matter. This all worked out. It worked out, it worked out, it worked out. And there's plenty of room in between the highway here where I can jump across if it gets super busy here. So, um, yeah, I'm only about 35 minutes outside of the Flying J area there. Works out really well because I'm getting a little low on my death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was kind of nice. The guy in there was really nice. He was sharing with me a little bit on his, his help there. And those are a lot of workers that are on a work program from Mexico. And uh, you actually see that a lot. Um, because of, they are amazing workers. The people from Mexico are amazing workers. They really are. They're hard workers. Uh, let's see if we can. Thankfully we're empty. Let's go baby. I don't want to slow the traffic down. And uh, because I deal with so many Hispanic people when we're crossing the border, it's it's kind of nice. I, I really enjoy talking with them and, and they're friendly people. And and I, I just curious, I was asking them, like, how do you do that? Do they live in town? But they house them there. They house them there. And he seems like a really super nice guy. And he says they're just wonderful people to be around. And uh, they're just grateful to be working and grateful to have a job and you know it's I kind of like that I think that, that is really cool when you have nurseries and farmland and that happens a lot Canada takes uh, takes in a lot of Mexican people to do work in their fields and that because these people are just happy to be working and, and they're grateful to have their freedom and they don't come into the country and, and rape it of everything it's got and take advantage of it. Yeah, it's kind of nice to see. It's nice to see. Yeah. Oh, well, today I was hoping to get the other load unloaded, but uh, like I said, it, it's going to be too close. They want to all take off at 3 o'clock. I'm not going to show up at 5 to 3 and say, it's time to unload me. And then I got to get back to the Flying J and hope I can get a parking spot. Yeah. 